So I wanted to talk real quick on self-protection from rioters. First off, let me define something. Peaceful protests are protected under the Constitution. When a protest is no longer peaceful, it becomes a riot, and it is no longer protected under the Constitution. You can look that up for yourselves. I just wanted to get that definition out there. What I'm talking about is non-peaceful rioters. I'm talking about the violent rioters out there. There's a lot of them. If you watch the news, it's happening all over. The best advice is to stay away from a potential riot, but as we've seen, it's spilling over into residential areas. It's spilling over into a lot of different areas where you may not be able to stay away from it. You may come across it. You may do everything right, and you may try to do your best to have as much street awareness as possible, and then you find yourself in that situation. So let's talk about tools for self-defense. So there's a lot of different tools out there, and, and, and this could be a subject that can talk about for years, honestly. There are so many different things, so many good firearms that you can use for self-defense. What I want to focus on is something that's in my inventory to give you an idea. Uh, this is something that I would go out if I was going to be thrown into that situation where I'm surrounded by rioters, my uh, life limb properties at risk, all that uh, neat stuff. This is what I would feel comfortable with. So uh, you have to think about security of your firearm. Uh, you have to think about how easy it is to move around, how ergonomic it is. You have to think about the firepower that you bring. What's enough firepower? You have to think about accuracy. Is the firearm going to be very accurate? Because that's one thing with a situation. If you're in an urban riot type situation, there are a lot of people around you. Just because you get attacked by one person does not give you a pass to shoot into the crowd and just spray ammunition everywhere. That's not how that works. So you want something that's accurate. You want good fire, uh, good uh, bullet performance, but not something that is over the top. That's just going to create other uh, risks because every bullet has your name attached to it. And, uh, you know, a bullet can travel a long ways. And the last thing you want is you want a bullet to hit something that you didn't intend to hit. I don't think anybody wants that on their conscience. I certainly don't. So you have to look at, okay, what's a good balance of handling, accuracy, firepower, all that good stuff. And this is what I came up with out of my inventory. This is a budget type setup. And I do that because that's very realistic for a lot of people that watch my channel. Sometimes we don't have the money or the resources or whatnot to get the real fancy gear. The fancy gear is awesome. Get what you can afford, get the best that you can afford, but I just wanna show some budget stuff here. So these are two pistols. This is an AR-15 pistol right here, 7.5 inch. Um, this is a Bear Creek Arsenal upper, just kind of a side note. Bear Creek, I have lots of their product. So I've had good experience with all their stuff so far, so I'm always gonna recommend them. Uh, but anyway, uh, back on subject here, this is a 7.5 inch AR-15. There has been good argument made against these that at a 7.5 inch, you don't necessarily have a lot of power except for close up. And that's generally true. But if I'm looking at a self-defense situation in a riot type environment, I'm not looking at far away shots. I'm looking at close up stuff. That's what I want. So uh, if you match the right ammo to the 7.5 inch barrel, you'll still get good performance out of the 5.56 or 223 cartridge. So that's not really much of an issue. The way this particular pistol is set up, I just have iron sights and I have a light. That's all I have. The reason I stuck with this is because it takes away Murphy's Law a little bit. My iron sights are always gonna work. And even if my light fails, I can still shoot with reasonably low ambient light and still shoot through my irons. I have my irons set to the close-up nighttime setting right here, the big the big peephole in the back for those that, uh, the lay person out there who are new to firearms, there are two peeps on the back of an A2 sight. You have a 300 yard or long range peep and you have a closer 100 to a 100, 200 peep and sometimes called a low light peep. So I, Keep that on the low light for up close because I'm not shooting far with this thing. Uh, my definition of up close is anything within uh, 50 yards. 
you could go out to 100. This will work just fine at 100, no issues at all. But 50 yards on in is about, I would think, would be the realm that I'd be operating in. Uh, the light, make sure it's a good quality light. You want to keep it nice and simple. Don't overcome, don't over stack your rail with all kinds of grips and this and that and the other thing. I like to keep it really simple and very important, a sling. Even though this is a pistol, I want a sling on it because I want to keep this retained to my body. That's extremely important. As we've seen in the Ritterhouse shooting event that um, he had a sling on his gun. It kept the gun to his body. That's extremely important. You want to have a sling. Now, why do I stick with a short range versus a regular AR? Now, keep in mind, any you know, if you have a 16 inch, that's fine. 18 inch, that's fine. But one thing I've noticed uh, and I've experienced in my uh, in my uh, training for law enforcement and military, doing close quarters type stuff, is the longer the barrel, the easier it is to grab onto potentially. So, and I say that potentially, it doesn't necessarily mean it always is, but potentially it's easier to grab onto. If I have a short, stout weapon like this, it'll be a little bit harder for somebody to get their hands on, especially when I'm pumping rounds through the barrel. Uh, keep in mind, if you're doing that, make sure you're doing it accurately. Again, you do not want to send rounds just down the way without aiming. It is just very irresponsible. So, um... That's my main pistol setup, and I like the uh, two is one, one is none type thing when it comes to self-defense against riots. So this right here, this is just a Taurus G3. This is a nine millimeter, just a backup. Basically, this is gonna be stuck in a concealed carry holster. I may be working with this, but if I run out of ammo for this or this becomes somewhat messed up or I lose this, somebody takes this from me, I have this. This is just a basic budget 9mm pistol. I don't have a light on this. I don't have anything fancy. If you want to have a light on your handgun too, uh, that's fine. It's not mandatory, but it certainly is something that'll help out. But it's just a basic 9mm handgun. And that is, uh, again, if this runs out, I can go to this. If I lose this, I can do this. If, I can, if this becomes inoperable for whatever reason, I have this. So uh, the one thing that you can change, this is configured for max um, compactness and for you know lightweight, all that good stuff. This only has a 20 round mag. Uh, I don't wanna pull them out of my safe right now, but I do have mag pull 40 rounders. So if I was really going into it, I would probably pull this 20 rounder out and I'd have some 40 rounders just because I don't like to reload, especially in a life or death situation. I don't wanna reload. And I'd rather have 40 chances of not reloading versus 20. So just some, some little uh, bullets of thought here that I wanted to send out to you folks. I don't like talking about, you know, stuff like that. I know it's a touchy subject, the whole riot protection type thing, but it's happening. Uh, depending where you're at. So you want to think about, okay... If you're in a prone area where you might experience that sort of thing, how are you going to set up your tools? And more importantly, how are you going to fine tune your mindset to best deal with that situation? The best thing ever is to just stay away. But if you cannot stay away or you've done everything you can and you can't stay away, uh, you wanna make sure you have some good tools. Just look at what you have in your inventory, think about it. Uh, more importantly, learn how to fight with what you got. We can always wish that we had this, that, or the other thing, but it doesn't no good because you're going to fight with what you have. So you want to make sure to think about that. But anyway, feel free to put comments in the comment section below with your thoughts and advice and all that good stuff. So with that said, stay safe out there.